But still we have that strong uh, spirit. Our hearts are strong Amen. because the Lord has been so good to us. Yes. Yes. yes, the Lord has been so good to us. Yes. Despite the fact that whatever that is going around, the Lord has been good. Amen. And he will remain to be good. Yes. No matter what you are going through, yes. the Lord will remain good. Amen. So we're going to go before the Lord and tell him, Tumwambi nafsi yangu itakuimbia. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We just dedicate our heart to God. And tell him he has been good to us. The Lord has been so good to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
us Jehovah Father dear Lord we can come and we can stand boldly in your presence Jehovah Father dear Lord and declare Jehovah Father that you've been good to us oh dear God you've just been so good to us dear Lord you have taken us Jehovah Father through a lot oh dear master you have taken Jehovah Father dear Lord our families our friends Jehovah Father through a lot dear Lord but this morning Jehovah Father we come oh dear Lord and we stand before you dear Lord my father dear God as we say Jehovah Father receive all the glory receive all the honor dear Lord Thank you, King of all glory, as we come in your sanctuary this hour, dear Master. We want to pray, Jehovah Father, that you may search our hearts, oh dear Lord. King of all glory, your word says, Jehovah Father, if we say we have not sinned, oh dear Master, oh, Jehovah Father, we make you a liar, dear Master. That's why we come, oh dear Master, and we want to repent, Jehovah Father, dear God. If there is anything, Jehovah Father, that you may find in our hearts, oh God, not pleasing to you, dear Master, we repent this hour, Jehovah God, and we dedicate our hearts to you, Jehovah Father. As we pray, Jehovah Father, dear Lord, let your Holy Spirit search our spirit, oh God, so that, Father, dear Lord, we may be in line with you, oh dear God. We thank you, we honor you, Jehovah Father. Thank you for every heart, oh dear Master, that is represented here, oh dear Master. We have come, Jehovah Father, so that, dear Lord, you may minister to us, oh God. You are the only one, Jehovah Father, who can get to the depth of our hearts, oh dear Master. Lord, we know, Jehovah Father, times we come in your house, oh dear Master with heavy burdens, oh dear Master, but you are telling us, Jehovah Father, we come to you, dear Lord. Even though we are heavy laden, Jehovah Father, you shall give us rest, oh dear Lord. 
That's why this morning we pray, Jehovah Father, dear Lord, if there is any heart, Jehovah Father, dear Lord, that is heavy laden, my Father, this morning, Father, we pray, Jehovah Father, as they come to you, dear Lord, as they look unto you, Jehovah Father, not unto any person, Jehovah Father, dear God, my Father, dear Lord, let their burdens, Jehovah Father, fall down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh dear God, my Father, my Savior, this is a house of prayer, Jehovah God, and Lord, we pray, Jehovah God, my Father, if there is anyone, dear Father, who is sick this morning, oh dear God, we pray, Jehovah Father, let your healing virtue, dear Father, flow in this house, Jehovah Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, King of all glory, because, Jehovah Father, you shall feed us with your word, oh dear Lord. We pray, Jehovah Father, that our hearts will be ready for your word, oh dear God, and we pray, Jehovah Father, every word, dear Master, that will come, Jehovah Father, it will not come back for Jehovah Father, dear Lord. It will have to accomplish, Jehovah Father, that which you have sent it, dear Father, to accomplish, oh dear Lord. We thank you, Jehovah Father, because, dear Lord, you have prepared, Jehovah Father, your servant, oh dear God. How we pray, Jehovah Father, that you not miss any moment, oh dear God. My Father, anything, Jehovah Father, that you want to do in us, oh dear God, may you help our spirit, Jehovah Father, to be sensitive to you, oh dear God, so that my Father, as we listen to your word, Jehovah Father, will be changed inside out, oh dear Father, for the glory glory and honor of your name, dear Lord. We thank you, King of all glory, for everything, Jehovah Father, as we remember our country, Kenya, Jehovah Father, dear Lord. We know, Jehovah Father, it has not been good, Jehovah Father, for the past few weeks, oh dear God. But one thing we are praying, Jehovah Father, dear Lord, is that your peace will prevail in our country, Jehovah Father, dear Lord. We are praying, Jehovah King of all glory, whatever that is going on, Jehovah Father, dear Lord. We pray, Jehovah Father, that you may intervene, oh dear God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Jehovah Father. We thank you even for this country, dear Lord, that you brought us, Jehovah Father. Thank you because, dear Master, you are also doing great things, Jehovah Father, dear Lord. We pray, Jehovah Father, for the leadership, oh dear Father, of this land, oh dear God. May you continue, Father, to reign, oh Jehovah Father. For our church, oh dear God, we thank you for everything, dear God. Thank you, Father, for all the leaders, Jehovah Father, the pastoral team, oh dear Master. We continue to pray for them, Jehovah Father, we pray, dear Lord, for all the leaders, Jehovah Father, all the ministries, dear Lord. We pray, King of all glory, that you shall reign, O oh dear Father, and lead us in everything, dear Lord. We thank you for this service and even the second service, O oh God. We, invite, we pray, Jehovah Father, let your spirit move in us, O oh dear God, so that, Father, dear God, we may receive what you have for us, Lord. We worship and we honor you, Jehovah Father. And it is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray and we believe. Amen. And the church says amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord Church. And good morning. It is a good day to be in the house of the Lord. My name is June Wakemani, and I'm glad to be here in the house of the Lord. There is fullness of joy. I will be leading this service this morning, and I'm born again. Christ is Lord and God over my life. He is my shepherd. I shall not want. Karibuni sana. Before I start, I just wanted to give a shout out and a message from deep in my heart of gratitude to the people who have been here for the last three days. If you did not visit this place from Thursday, Friday, and yesterday, please find a video, find a photo, find something, because there's no words for what happened here at KCIC. I so love, so much love. KCIC members, I have no words. This was over beyond, beyond volunteer. This was total sacrifice. Total sacrifice. So much selflessness. We picked every paper on the floor, whether it was trash, whether it was bathrooms, whether it was anything, you name it. 
they would call for volunteers, KCIC where they are running. Even people were wondering, are you guys getting paid? No, we are KCIC. We are LAMP. This is what we do. We are Kenya Community International Church. We serve our community and we serve with the love of Christ. KCIC, congratulations. Congratulations. You, you took the trophy this weekend. I've never seen, and I don't think there's anybody in the Kenyan community who has seen such an event for the community in the history of this state. There was people from everywhere, from Oregon, from everywhere, and we did it. And if you look at the place, it's back to factory settings. Eh? <laughs> you can't even tell anything happened. Eh? And if you look around and you're missing some people, they left here at 6 a.m. this morning. That is how it was here. And I bless the Lord. And you know, the word says, God never forgets the labor of your hands. So those were blessings upon blessings for the members and for their coming generations. You picked it up. Amen? Congratulations again. I love you all, KCIC members and our visitors to Karibuni Sana, be part of this church. We love people and we love God. Amen? Uh, we're going to move to announcements now and I will welcome our very own Pastor Wanyoike. Let's give him a hand clap. I also join uh, June in congratulating our team and our members for the work that you have done since Thursday, uh, Friday, and yesterday um, until this morning, uh, this very morning, when some have left for home to have some rest. This is a sign that this church is going somewhere. And it's a great church, and we thank God for this facility that it came a time like now to serve Kenyans from all walks of life, from different areas, either from Oregon, Canada, or within Washington. Those who came from last day, Friday, and, and yesterday. The patience that you guys, you demonstrated, even in a minute, uh, some situations that to may occur when the systems kind of went down, uh, we saw this sacrifice, and we thank God that we have got such a team, we have got such people who can rise to occasion in such situation. We also appreciate the the Kenya consular. Cons is it? Cons I'm confusing with these these words: consular and consulate. Consulate. Kenya consulate from Los Angeles uh, with the ambassador Thomas Kwaka. He was here throughout, and uh, he's a down to earth man, and we really appreciated him and we appreciate the work he has done and even bringing the services. And by extension, uh, root of government, because these services are being decentralized so that all Kenyans will receive uh, these services. ID card, uh, passport, new, uh, your passport or new uh, uh, passports that are in place or in, 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 in operation, and many other services that you will require as regards um, our own, own, own issues. Praise the Lord. We thank God for all of you, and uh, we hope, and this is our, not even our hope, this is the threat for the future, even when we get engaged in such others. Others are coming, by the way, other issues will be coming uh, even greater than that one, because this is church on the move. Praise the Lord. Buona sifuwe. Two things. One, uh, on 22nd, on this month, this second month, this happened to be Palm Sunday, but because of <laughs> because of the issues that we are running, we did not we were not able to um, organize. We normally go the uh, way of the cross, maybe around the compound, and uh, somehow, some way, we have missed it. Uh, but this is Palm Sunday, and tomorrow we are starting the Passion Week, so that on good fr on Friday um, we shall have the service. Uh, Good Friday from 6 and we shall have Holy Communion. So I will urge the uh, praise and worship team, I don't know whether you plan to come early so that you can practice or you come on Thursday to practice and then uh, so that we can have the service 
from 6 to 9 uh, so that uh, we will mark uh, this Passion Week. And uh, we shall also have communion, Holy Communion, in the uh, service on Friday. And then on Sunday, it's uh, resurrection, Easter Sunday. And so this week, we are coming to a close of our fourth days of rent. And uh, I believe you have come to a journey when we have been talking about walking with God, walking in wisdom, walking in unity, and we have been talking about walking in love. And we shall come up to see the love of God that is demonstrated on the cross by his own initiative so that you and I may be born again, may have the hope of eternity that we all look forward to. Praise the Lord. And so we thank God for all this uh, work that's ongoing, spiritual work and other work, so that all of us are served and they grow to the level the Lord would require us to. Second day on 22nd of this month, uh, we shall have all the members who have joined us, who have never met us, um, all the new members, we are saying all the new members, we shall meet in this church on 22nd at 2 p.m. If you are a future form and you are a new member, uh, and you have never met me or met the church council, we want to have a sitting with you on 22nd of April at 2 p.m. here in this church. So prepare yourself to come and uh, meet us, and we explain to you our ministry and all that, so that we can all be on the equal footing. 22nd, mark that, those who are new members. On 16th again of this month, we shall have a fundraiser. Edgar is not here, he just wrote to me a message. He, he left this morning, so I would not expect him to be here at this point. So on 16th, we shall have a um, um, fundraiser. And you, of course, you know, we have done this work uh, throughout since we started uh, this work of constructing this sanctuary. And this is a part of our process, our mission uh, in this church. So on 15, and you have uh, the pledge forms. If you have not done so, um, return those forms, uh, having uh, shown what you are pledging and all that, so that we can have at least a figure by which we shall be working with. And this is a process that we have been doing, so we do not need to explain much than that, that to return the form. And on 16 this month, we are having uh, a fundraiser. Praise the Lord. Are you a visitor here for your very first time? Can I see you? Not, not, uh, not, uh, not the ambassador. <laughs> not the ambassador. And he's not a visitor for the very first time because he has been here since last year. So he's not a visitor for his very first time. He has been here for the first time in this service. But for the sanctuary, he has been here for the last three days. Um, seems not to have any visitor. But this morning... Uh, before I introduce the speaker, uh, Reverend Dr. Gigi, he was here last year, a time like now. I don't know why it is uh, coinciding at, after one year you are visiting. So do we expect that next year, March, you are also here? Okay. Uh, or even earlier. All right. He was here a time like now, <laughs> and he's back again, and we thank God for you. Uh, he will tell us more about himself when he comes to share the word. But meanwhile, this minute, I will give um, our visitor who have come to uh, oversee the exercise that has been going on, Ambassador Thomas Kwaka, and um, he had intended, we had intended you come to the next service. You come back? <laughs> Promise you are, or we hold you here. We, uh, can we say all the gates to be locked, but we can hold you here? Yeah, he will stay. So, Dr. Geduku, I will stand here. Uh, Ambassador, stand here because we are out of time, so that we can say hi, and then you have a moment to say. Uh, 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 with, I thank the Lord because of this chance that He has called me to be in this sanctuary. Like that, I've read this is not my first time to be in this sanctuary, and I, we love you all. And uh, the service you do to the community, that is fantastic. Uh, I can express that as the deputy chair of the community, chair, uh, on behalf of the Northwest, uh, we are glad that you offered the service mm. and let it continue like that, and God will bless you. That's why this church is here. And uh, I'm Dr. Giduku. I 
love the Lord. I work for Fulbright Theological Seminary in Lakewood and uh, still in Kenya. Uh, we are still working there and uh, Lord is doing great things there. I have 401 students in 10 centers and uh, you're most welcome. If you want to find out what we are doing, just call me in my number and uh, we'll be having graduation in August and uh, that will be good. Thank you for giving me this opportunity and we will rush to apostolic for a few minutes and then come back. Okay. Thank right. you. Yes, uh, good morning. God is good. All right, wonderful. My name is Thomas Quaker Omolo, uh, better known as Big Ted. Uh, you can Google me, by the way. Um, <laughs> if you follow me, I'll follow you back, and I'm sure you will get a couple of likes. I only have uh, 50,000 people following me on Instagram, so I'm just a small person. Um, I want to salute the leadership of this church. Um, we, got, we came here yesterday morning. at uh, I was here at 7.30. And we started our work at 8. And the team has left right now at 8 in the morning, served the last person. It's the first ever 24-hour service. Now, my team has not asked for extra money. They haven't asked for anything. They just did it because they're giving back to the community. But I believe their attitude is because of where we were. If the attitude here was wrong, then my team would also have had a wrong attitude. I mean, we're taught in life that whatever you eat actually affects your body, your system. If you eat a lot of toxicity, then you become toxic. You know, I thank the leadership of this church. I, I, I don't know how best to thank you, Reverend. And I'm very, very emotional because I have never seen, my dad is a bishop. I have never seen the leadership of a church roll up their sleeves to wash the carpet, make tea, collect firewood, open the gates, man each and every entrance. That is usually left to the youth because you're in the Vijana, not the leadership. So for that, I honor you and I salute the leadership of this church. And when I come back at midday, I have to come back. I'd rather even not go where I'm going. But I have to come back and declare a blessing here. Amen. Because it's important for us to do that. You know, I'll be, I'll be thanked and I'm being glorified right now in WhatsApp groups in Nairobi in government. But why? Because the leadership of the place made it possible. You opened your kitchens for us. You opened your rooms for us. You let us use this facility. You gave us stationery. It is only important that I honor you guys. And... Um, I will come back and I'll, I'll be able to do that. To everybody out here, God is calling us to be different people. You know, we cannot come here and lift our hands and say we love God. And then we don't behave as if we love God. It's good to be faulted. I'm a very faulted human being. But the best thing I think God loved about David was a faulted person acknowledging that God is still God of his life. And for that I'm happy. So for me, it's gratitude to the 9 o'clock service, to everybody who's here. Uh, um, I think I was with you, ma Madame, and uh, at the back there, um, and a couple of other people. I may forget you, but God will never forget you. And I've told God this morning that even if it's just for me, then let him bless you. Yeah. And uh, allow me to, to leave. Narudi. I'm coming more for the food at lunchtime than actually the service. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. And even choosing. By the way, what's a coincidence? The next weekend you are going to his church. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. his church. So come and listen to his preaching. I will do that. And uh, <laughs> you have a chat and the way forward. Thank you. Let's appreciate the Ambassador. You know, what an honor. Uh, don't. Uh, as you have promised, we would like to have a, a, a photo with them, and then we hang it here on these walls. And so that uh, when you, somebody else comes, you know that we are visited, and you send it, the visitor's book. Time is far gone, so I know Ed Guy is not here, so he was to do the offering. Or oh, it's better? 
Oh, brother, oh, very good. Everybody's up to the task. But yeah, where's Kashuma? Where's Kashuma? Kashuma come before uh, Edda, uh, is it Edda? No, uh, Beda. Beda and Edda seem to be close names. Uh, let's pray for Kashuma. He is saying he is giving thanks to God for his 11th birthday. Yeah. Uh, so he, and he's growing tall sooner or later. He will be taller than me. And we thank God for you. Let's pray for Gashuma. Father in heaven, we thank you for this young man who is growing and knowing you and fearing you. We pray for blessing upon him and even this 11th birthday that God shall increase in him uh, in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with you and the parents and the church. Let him grow to be a man who fears God and who has got a passion to serve you. Expand his boundaries and bless his mind and protect him from all evils, dear Lord. I shall grow to be a strong man who will serve you in his youth and even beyond. We thank you for this blessing and we thank you that God to go towards uh, fathering thy kingdom. And even as you father, as we father the kingdom, remember his heart and remember his life and bless the work of his hands because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you blessed? Amen. Our, pack, our pockets are blessed. Amen. Our wallets are blessed. Yes. Zell and Kashap are blessed. Yes. So here we are. <laughs> and tithe it too. Yes. So let's pray for the offering. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you. We want to thank you and we want to glorify your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for what you have given us, O oh Lord. And we are giving part of it to you because you are the giver. We thank you, Master. Even as we give, we pray for a blessing that each one of us shall be blessed. Because you are telling us that give and shall come back unto you. A good measure, shaken together, pressed over, and running over and over. So we are praying, God, that you bless us even as we give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I kept it short, so come and give. Uh, the tithery numbers, every num the numbers are right there, so come. Let's start our giving, and we'll be blessed. And as we give, the children should also be coming up. You give and come up for the <laughs> so that you go to class and then the teachers are waiting for us there. Is that okay? Okay, let us pray. Our God and our Father, in, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for our children this morning. This is another wonderful day that we celebrate, that we have our children with us. You having taken care of them throughout the week when we know that it is not a must that every Sunday 
we have all our children together, especially when we see what is happening in this land. And we do give you thanks and praise for taking care of them and for protecting from harm. We also give them to you this week under the protection of the Lord Jesus Christ that throughout this week and even in the days to come and the years to come that these, our children, will suffer no harm because the Lord will keep them safe under his arms. And we pray that you take them up like on eagle's wings when there is danger, that these, our children, forever will be protected by you. We commit them to you now as they go to class, that, Lord, the word of God be spoken, will be spoken to them, and we also pray for them as they start another school week tomorrow, that, Lord, you will be with them. We pray for their parents who take great care of them at home, that, Lord, you will bless them too. We pray for their teachers in school and also in church, that, Lord, these our teachers will be blessed of you. And even those teachers that would want to take them away from the word of God, we pray that God, the power of God, will be upon our children and it will teach them to say no to ungodliness at this time when we know there's a lot of teaching that is contrary to your word. We remember the families that don't have children. We pray for them that you will remember them and that you give them the children that they ask from you. We remember our other children that are not with us here. Some are far away. Some are in our motherland. And we pray that God one day, when we wait upon you, that there will be a reunion when we see all our children that we pray for, that they will bring them back to, to bring them to us. We ask that this day will come and all of us shall rejoice. Also, Lord, we remember other families that have children that are out of their homes and are lost in the world. We pray that, Lord, you remember them and that, God, you bring these children back to your fold because you are good. We thank you and we honor you. It is in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, do we pray and we believe. Amen. Amen. Let's pass this way and go to class. Praise God, church. It's time for our reading as we get ready to hear the word. And our first reading will be from Catherine Jenga and our second reading, Dr. Catherine Warenga. Praise God. I am Catherine Jenga. Um, our first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 1 to 5. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of the dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. And that's the word of God. Oh, it's on. Okay, thank you. So s the second reading comes from the book of Luke 22. Mm -hmm. 
from 39 to 46. That's Luke 22 from 39 to 46. And the title is Jesus Prays on the Mount of Olives. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet, not by my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. 45. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. That is the word of God. Thanks be to God. to give us the word. Let's appreciate him. Uh, allow me to um, uh, just read uh, extra few verses. Uh, while he was still speaking, a crowd came up and a man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus follows, or rather, when Jesus followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And one of them struck, struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. And then Jesus said to the chief priest, the officers of the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him, Am I leading a rebellion that you've come with the swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts, and you did not lay a hand on me, but this is your hour. When darkness reigns, this is the word of God. Praise to God. Let us pray, dear God. On this Passion Week, we pray that we will be overwhelmed by your love, especially when we know what it is that took you on the cross. It is not the nails. It is love that put you on that cross. Remind us of that love and take us to that night of Gethsemane so that we may walk with you, but also be assured of our lives here and now. Thank you for this opportunity. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, those of you who don't know me, I'm looking at the time. I was told to be out of here by quarter two. If not, I will not preach the next service. I'm putting the words to the minister's mind. So I have what? 15, 10, 25 minutes, right? Right? You know, if you don't walk together, some of you would start saying, who am I, car? Don't worry, you have enough time to go and do other things. I come from Georgia in a uh, church called Kenyan American Community Church. They just finished the service because we are three hours ahead of you. So if Jesus will come geographically, he'll pick us first. <laughs> and then uh, Seattle will come, but it's okay. <laughs> if he doesn't come from the east, west coast. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to lament now because I'll have enough time later on, but I, I came here at 9 o'clock, and there was nobody. And I was in the cold. And I was looking for someone to come. The, because of the change of time, I thought he said nine instead of ten. So there was no one. Until some two gentlemen came 
and offered me some coffee. Uh, I'll leave the rest to, you know when you start getting served by handsome men, and you have a daughter at home who has no boy. I was wondering, is this, is this a sign? <laughs> Not only was I served with coffee, there was chapati. They went over and above. And that is a testimony I'll take to Atlanta, to Catherine first. <laughs> if, the, if the Lord says so, who am I? To refuse and they just happen to be pastor's kids and Catherine is a daughter to the pastor may the Lord continue working in you brother <laughs> oh goodness I wish it was a revival I would have led that day I love you all guys this is uh, a church I love a lot I've been here congratulations for this I will lament later because I was supposed to be invited at the opening. They forgot. And if they had invited me, I would have come to prophesy stuff. But I love you all. And I will come again. Before. I'm not going to wait for a year. I'm coming here in June. And then another time. And another time until the mission. Is accomplished. <laughs> and all in favor say amen. amen. That is which is bound on earth. It will be bound in heaven. <laughs> Today I want to bring you a message about the night at Gethsemane. Gethsemane is the, it described as a garden on the Mount of Olive, Olives in Jerusalem. I have been there. In Aramaic, it's called Gethsemane, oil press. It's about one and a half and three quarters of a mile to the walls of Jerusalem. We visited there a few years ago to see that night when Jesus Christ was betrayed. It was a night like no other. And I want you to remember to think about that night at Gethsemane because that is what leads us to Sunday. We must understand about that Friday. I know you have the Friday coming, but allow me to push it to that night at Gethsemane. And everything that Jesus went through he went through so that all of us, when we go through such moment, we may remember that our Lord suffered the same. I don't know whether you have ever had a Gethsemane in your life. A moment of darkness. A moment whose life, if you were to read your script or your book of life, you'd like to scrap some pages of your life. Because it was a bad night. I've had many of them. Because pastors, bishops, whatever they are, they are not exempt from Gethsemane. I had one. Not long ago. I believe maybe added this year. And there are many. A moment of darkness, a moment where life was at starts to you. Three things were happening in my family. One about me, one with my wife, and one with my son. Your friend was okay. I had visited a doctor because I had a life insurance, uh, not a life insurance, but I, I also have that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I have a life insurance. <laughs> Catherine has a quote of it. Um, and the doctor checked the blood and everything. And 
they said there are things they were seeing and I needed to act so that they don't get worse. I don't want to tell you how they got through me to know it because there are many avenues to go to the stomach. That's for another day. And we will talk with the people who are 18 and above without my in-laws. And there were things that I had to correct. And so when I was going through that, we had moved and we were looking for a new home because we had lived in this house for 20 years and we needed our dream house. My mom, I guess she kept saying, it has been so long, I need a dream house. And when they tell you that, you better listen, especially when you get to a certain age because there's an attitude that keeps cropping up. Oh, yeah, somebody's identifying, yeah. And you better listen to them because if you don't, we are always on the receiving end. And therefore, we were in an apartment, and we were paying a lot of money, over $3,000 a month because it was on a short-term uh, uh, lease. So we've been looking houses. I think we looked for almost 80 houses before we settled on this one. When we were doing that, I had to be careful what the doctor was telling me, and so I had to change the diet. And actually, when I came here, there were some things I had bought I was swallowing in the hotel to make sure I get away from all the sugar, all those things. Actually, when I came here, if you remembered, uh, I've lost 25 pounds since, although I've added nine because I went to Kenya the other day. I'm working on it. So there was an issue I had to address about health. But my wife's dad, my father-in-law was also very sick. And my wife had said, you know, I guess she, I, I need to go home. I don't think my dad is doing good. And I don't want to hear one of these days that he's gone. And I said, what do you want? I said, okay, let me think about it. So she's worried about her dad. I'm worried about my health. And then Michael, he was having a crash program summer to finish up his computer science. When I was lining up at CVS, Michael early calls. When you see a call from your son, 20, between 20 and above, it has to be serious. They don't always call. Either they need money, or a car has broken down. I saw a call, and I answered. He had a very, very heavy voice. Dad, what am I going to do? And I'm like, what? Dad, I could hear he was almost breaking down. The professor has given me an F. I said, what? And I realized if he missed one of the classes in summer, he may not graduate. And he had taken a little while before finishing his course. My spirit was crushed. Here is my son. And when you have a 26-year-old calling daddy for help, what am I going to do? Your wife is here crying to go home to see his sickly father. And here I am worrying about my health. I was number three to getting some medication from CVS. I walked away from the line. I went straight to the car. The first instinct was, go to your son. Because that cry is not, is desperate. And I kept talking on him, what's going on, Michael? It's going to be okay. How? How? Dad, I worked this. I was in a group, and it was a group project. How? How can he give me a, Michael, hold on. And he's calling me because I'm a professor of Kennesaw State University where he was also going to school. So I'm contemplating, telling him I need the number of that professor because I'm going to call him. I say, I also teach there. How can my son get an F? You know, there comes a time where you have to stand up. So I'm driving like crazy. I have forgotten about medical issue. My wife is here wondering about his father. 
Her father, thank you so much. You are good in English. Thank you. I was good in maths. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I go home quickly. Fast forward. I go him to him. Fast forward. It's the afternoon. Told him, text the professor. Tell him ABCD. Ta -da -da, ta -da -da. Fast forward. He's there. Bedding his head. He woke up after two hours. He hugged me. I looked at him. He showed me the phone. And the professor said, I'm sorry. It was a typo. You had an A. I felt like that was a stupid mistake. So, but, I, but, but I also was quick because I've also have had that mistake when I'm entering the grades. One down. The health, my father, that's another story. I was telling you a Gethsemane moment. And I'm sure if you are still here, if you woke up here, I'm sure that you will have your moment. Don't you have your story? That moment where you don't know what to do. I have many others. The others I will leave for the other service. Jesus had a Gethsemane moment. A son of God who had done everything. He had to perform miracles. And people knew there was a man in town who could do stuff. But on this night, it was different. This Gethsemane place was a place of distress and trouble. Indeed, his spirit was struck with the terror. It was a place of desperation because it is at this point of Gethsemane that he cries, Abba, Father, I know all things are possible. Take away this cup from me. He was so overwhelmed. And even though he knew he had come to die for the sin, he had the human element. Because Jesus was 100% God, but he was also 100% human. There's a time he cried, Father, if you're willing, Take this cup from me. But he was also quick to say, yet, not my will, but yours. There comes a moment, my friend. Even personally, where I've said, God, I know I'm a man of faith that tells people to trust in you. This is too much to bear. Especially when they look upon you. But this is a place of honest prayer. Being in agony, he is praying so hard. And the Bible says his sweat was like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. He was weeping. He was in full tear because of what was in front of him. It was a place of struggle with the death. It is a place of surrender to the will of the Father. But it was also a place of betrayal. I don't know whether you've been ever betrayed by somebody. I guess the money when somebody walked away of your life. Someone who had promised you that you'd marry you. Someone who had shown all the education just to discover you are never in their heart. People have walked away from your life. People have cheated you out of business. People who have betrayed you. Jesus said, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. And the betrayer is not an outsider. It's one of them. It is a place of disappointment because the people he thought would stick with him are quick to abandon.
Have you had your Gethsemane? That night, it's a sad night. And if you have not had any, I don't pray you get it. But I will tell you in this life, it's not a matter of if, but when. Let me give you some lessons about Gethsemane experience. And what we learn about this night before Jesus is crucified. <laughs> One thing I've learned when you have Gethsemane, make sure that you know who your friends are. Because what you see is not what you get. Friends, do you know Jesus had uh, a way of life. He had the Torah of disciples. And there were times he would leave them out and just have three. Who are the three? Peter, John, and James. And the others would not appear. But there was also a time when he would only have one. Who was that? John. John is a disciple whom Jesus loved. He was the closest. He was his confidant. When he was being betrayed, he said one of you is going to de 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 uh, 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 betray me. And every one of them were asking John, who is it? Because he was very close to him. By the way, those who are Bible scholars, in the early century, the only gospel that was read more than any other was the gospel of John. It has a lot of divinity because he was the closest disciple. Do you remember when Peter was told on you the church will be built? And then Peter was asking, for you? I'm going to be the head of the church? For you? What about, what about the John you love? It's like somebody has promised you you're going to marry. And then you're telling, why there are? I'm thinking about you. For you? <laughs> what about Catherine? You know? And you know what Jesus said? What has that to do with you? Might do a business. Do what I've given you. If I say that John should live until I come back, what is that to you? And you know what happened to John? How he died? Where he went? That's for another day. It is good to choose your friends to know who are your friends. Because the moment of Gethsemane, you need to know who's going to stick with you because not all your friends will stick with you. Can I have an amen somewhere? Amen. And let me tell you, friends, you also need to know where they belong. There are people who are there for your eyes only. Did you hear me? Yeah. There are people who you are supposed just to see and not talk to. For your eyes... Because when you get close to them, they may be the betrayers. Do you know there are people who are given to you for a reason and for a season? Let me give you a formula. There are people in life who will come to you. They are not meant to be with you for two, three, four years. They are friends who are meant for our friends for a month. For a year. For two years. Then move. Let them move. And you have to be very intelligent and very discerning to know who is it that is meant for life. And that is why you find some people are so close, you feel so good with them, and then they come to a time who are sicky. Uh, have, you, have you been there? Yeah. There's a heat, a moment. You feel attracted, but they come to a time I'm like, I don't feel like hanging with this person anymore because we're not supposed to be with you for three years. For a season and for a time. Don't stick, don't worry what is going on. When people come and go, unajua watu umetoka kwetu Atlanta wanakuja huko kwenye. Na ni wengi na niraka nilo horoshio nyinyi muna niharibia ijiri. They are making it even understand. Ni wengi with an attitude. It reached, it reached to a point where I was complaining, what is going on with life? But you know, God revealed to me, there are people who are given to you for a reason and for their season. When the season is over, 
let them go. Hello? Even those of you who are having friends, relations, watch for the signs. Some are not meant to be there permanently. And don't confuse liking and loving. Because there are people who have married people they like. There are people who have married people who are supposed to be their brothers. There are people who are supposed to be sister in terms of relations. You married them. They were, not to be, they were not supposed to be married. They were supposed to stay in relationship like friends, like a brother and sister. And then you married because you confused liking and loving. That is why people get married and you are like, why did I get to this person? In the first place, we're not supposed, you confused love and liking. And there are several loves. There is a love of a brother, sister, filial life, filial life. You confuse filial with eros. Hello? Be careful how you locate friends. Jesus was very smart. He knew the time for three, the time for one, or the other. Guess the money. The other thing is a moment of taking courage. I know time is almost done. Let me carry it because I have three minutes to finish. What was I doing? There's a place of courage where you have to take, become courageous. Let me jump. There's a time of, uh, 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 of allowing the grace of God to take through Gethsemane. Because there are times during Gethsemane where you need just grace to go through. You may not have the stamina to fight. It is a moment of grace. At that time when I was going through my health, my son, my wife, if there's a time I prayed for grace. Now, wakati huu nasubuka hivi, washirika wanakuita. Bishop, where are you? I have a brother who want to get a visa in Kenya. Can you please pray for me? Come on, this is not a time for visa. My wife is troubling. I have a health issue. My son is about to break through. This is not a time to pray for a visa. And then I pray quickly. <laughs> I'm going to say, help, help, God, visa, Lord. I know you do many things. I know you are able to do. And when I'm saying I'm able to do, it's not so much about the visa. You are able to do to help my... <laughs> There are times of Gethsemane where you need the grace. And it's only grace that will take you through certain things. I love this. And then at the moment of Gethsemane, there is the moment you need encouragement. Do you know the Bible says, and there appeared when he was so distressed, verse Luke 22, verse 43, you can project. And when Jesus was so much down and he was so pressed down and he was so weak an angel appeared from heaven the scripture says an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him hello guess what in the moment of gethsemane help will come it came for jesus an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. Who strengthened Jesus? Come on. A what? An angel. When you love God, my friend, when you are in the midst of nowhere, an angel will come and will encourage you. Jesus needed encouragement at the point of need. When you're very down. Let me give you an example. I don't take it literally. I, I used to hang up with my uncle. Uncle used to go to the pubs. I was staying in the house. Can you be a eh? To the Gakure soda. I was about to go to the house. I was going 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 and as they were getting drunk, I was also getting drunk. Do you know if you stay with them, you start with them, wanaongea, 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 wanaongea. Before you know it, unaongea kama wao. Wakia dahaja, unaeda. Wakia dahaja, unaeda. Si hata mimi inainge, lazima itoke. Shuba ikumina shiga na. Idea rise ni shuga ilikuwa nafanya kazi. 
But one thing I realized, my uncle one day would wake up and say, Nito the Nade Moharu. In fact, you go to a club without any money. But he went home drunk. You know why? He found his colleagues. Nariniabia Jamumoja, my uncle, Dukamake. When you don't have the money, it is with the other person. When the other person has the money, you may not have it. There's no where money goes. Why do, where, where do you think money goes? If I don't have it, he has it. If when he doesn't have it, I have it. So he went with the faith kwa pub, akijua kwaba, hata kama na pesa, ma Do you know why? He only needed to say a word. Just that. And the, and the brothers knew. Washa ni mpati ya leo, sababu kesha na mita kuja bida. And I realize they have a very good fellowship. I'm not advocating, I'm only telling you an example. <laughs> Don't worry. When you think you are dry, somebody is going to come refresh you. When you are down on Gethsemane, a nature will come. And I want to declare to your life, even when you get there, help will come. Help is on the way. Because Jesus must accomplish this mission that he must come to die for the other. Finally, because of time, let me tell you this. Look at the ultimate resort. Even though Jesus is going to go through this agony at Gethsemane, even though it is Friday, Sunday is coming. Come on, somebody. Sunday is coming. Yes, it is Friday. Yes, I'm being betrayed. Yes, I'm weak. Yes, I'm crying. But Friday will come and go. Because Sunday will come. And when Sunday comes, I'll rise again. It doesn't matter how many stones I'm going to put in my tomb. That power of the resurrection will come and let me loose. So don't worry. Gethsemane is not the end. Because it is Friday. But Sunday is coming. And I want to speak to your life. If we ever go through Gethsemane, hang on there. Help will come. You may be betrayed, but don't you worry. Kukituka kutakea. That is my language. Wakesi. Kukituka kutakea. Kwa hivu ukiona kumetuka is darkness. Jua just like the darkness comes, it will go. And I want to declare in your life, whatever guest the money you may have, hata kukituka, kutakea, na kama mutu umekatua, and you have nowhere, don't you worry. Gethu ke no kere katia, no kere dhudoka. And I like the words of Micah, that says, enemy, don't rejoice over me, even though I fall. I will rise again. Yes, it is Gethsemane. Yes, you have been betrayed. Yes, you have been left. But don't you worry. It is just a Friday, a moment of agony. Sunday is coming. God bless you. We thank God that Sunday is coming. Amen? Amen. And Sunday is here with us. Amen? Amen. And Sunday that is, uh, Hebrew says, is eternal rest. That we enter into God's eternal rest as we move forward. Praise the Lord. Amen. There has been a great service out of great sacrifice. And uh, we really thank God. Uh, we apologize for that. Uh, I think I had indicated that. It's only that you are, our time and hours are different. So you woke up very early, and um, well, I hope you are warm. Actually, I went to the office and made him uh, his, his time warm. So I hope there are no more complaints when you come to the next second service. <laughs> How can you be made warm by my sons? 
I, hit, I light the office for you, warm, and then you come to say, I'll suffer next time, no way. Can we start, let's stand for the blessing. And now, may the God of peace who brought uh, through the blood of eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. And the blessing of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, especially the, during this Palm Sunday and Passion Week, be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen.